Hey, what's up guys? Chris here from Aquarium Conversations. Uh, back here with another video. And last week I did a video or an update and I asked you guys to maybe, you know, give me some ideas of what you'd like to see from this channel. Whether it be suggestions, whether it be things you haven't tried, whether things I've tried, how did it work. Um, you know, uh, advanced things, um, not so advanced things, whatever. But um, I, I definitely appreciate that for those of you who have responded and given me some ideas. You've given me a lot to think about and keep the ideas and suggestions coming. Like I said, I want to make this as interactive as possible. I think it was the first comment I got. I'm not sure who sent it out, but um, <clears throat> they wanted to see a community tank. And uh, I think this person had even recommended, you know, do like a better sorority. And I said, well, you know, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to run out and just grab fish and set up a tank just to do one video. And I thought, you know, that that that's probably on the more advanced side of things, right? Um, I would say probably the majority of the people who watch me are that kind of beginner maybe somewhat advanced, maybe um, exploring different things. So, so I'm going to stay away from the better sorority, but I do want to talk about community tanks. I want to talk about what I see as a community tank and how I make my community tank work. Make my community tanks work, excuse me. Um, we're going to talk about stocking. We're going to talk about size of the tank, size of the fish, filtration, um, we're going to talk about bio loads and things like that, so, and as I look around, there's the, there's the 65 behind me, there's the salt water, and I was like, no, I was like, if there's one tank, it probably uh, epitomizes a community tank, it, it's this tank over here, so let's, let's go ahead and we'll flip this around, we'll get in front of this tank and we'll talk for a bit, hang on. Okay, many of you know this tank, many of you have seen this tank, many of you remember when I first got this tank. This is my Aquion 36 gallon bow front. This was, uh, this is still a very, very special tank for me. It was my, you know, at the time it was the, the first tank I considered to be big, you know. I had a lot of nano tanks, two gallon, three gallon, six gallon, five gallon and uh, went to PetSmart and they had a really, really good deal on this tank and I picked it up and was super excited to have it, still super excited to have it. 36 gallons, um, I've, man, I've had everything in here from angels to rams to rainbows. There's still some rainbows in here. We'll just kind of go around real quick and I'll try to focus in. I got uh, two angel fish over here in the corner. I got some Congo Tetras right there. I got uh, some Australian rainbows. I got a Madagascar rainbow. I got a turquoise rainbow. Uh, another Australian rainbow. Uh, I got a pearl garami in here. I've got uh, I'm missing one. I've got a dwarf uh, prey, uh, prey cox rainbow up there. I've got a uh, Crebensis down here hiding in the in the Anubius right there. I've got some quarry cats in here. If I had to guess, let me think. Uh, two, five. Fifteen? Sixteen? Maybe more? Fish in here? I mean, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Man, maybe fifteen or sixteen fish in here? Um, and I and, and many of you are saying, and probably, you know, I've said it, man, this tank is overstocked. And I would say you're absolutely right. 36 gallon bow front. I should maybe have half the fish in here, guys. A lot of these fish, you know, that pearl garami, he's about three and a half inches. These these rainbows, I'm sorry, these uh, angel fish over here are, you know, maybe the size of uh, somebody's regular hand. The con the Congo tetras are going to get bigger. The rainbows, there, I don't see them getting too much bigger. This Australian one right here, he's he's pretty large. That turquoise uh, up there, he's he's pretty large. So how do I make this work? What's 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 the secret to this? You know, and I'll be honest, you know, I'm not I'm not perfect. I got some algae and stuff and you know on the Anubius and things like that. Nothing I'm nothing I'm really concerned about. Uh, first thing, let's talk about filtration. 
So this is a 36 gallon tank. I'm running an Aquion 50 over here. And I did that from the start. That's the only filter I've had on this tank. I've never had anything smaller than that. Um, as far as hang on the back. Uh, I always wanted to go because I knew I was going to put more fish in here. So I wanted to go with a, a, a filter that creates uh, obviously a lot of filtration. And if you look up there, lots of water movement. Okay. Also, I have a, this is probably rated for a 30 to 40 gallon. Um, uh, this is a top fin brand, this internal filter right here. So when you think about, you know, how often does the water get turned over or, fil or filtered, and I'm sure there's some math in here, and let's not make this too advanced, but, you know, if you're going to have a community tank and overstock your tanks, which my personal preference I absolutely love. This is what you see at the pet store. You see a bunch of fish in the tank, and they're all moving around. They're all getting along. I'll get to that uh, uh, here in a second. Um, but you got to have more than adequate filtration. What else in here helps me with my filtration? Can anyone guess? You're right, plants. So I found in here, you know, uh, to have fish that are compatible with plants. They don't eat the plants. You know, if anything, they like to find shelter and hide in the plants like that. The quarries that are in here love to dart around between the wood and the plants and all that kind of stuff. And they help to filter the water. So I've got some a bunch of Anubias in here. I've got some Crips, uh, Crips Peralis. Um, I, I may even uh, add more plants at one time. You know, you guys... Uh, um, know that plants help uh, remove nitrates and toxins out of the water they turn that into oxygen which helps oxygenate the water so that's another thing that I use that that uh, makes this community tank overstock community tank work if you look real closely down here at the substrate maybe you can see it maybe you can't but there's some pieces of there you go some red pit rocks and things like that they're in the back there too what is that That is lava rock that I put and I've mixed in and it is underneath the, the substrate here. Why lava rock? Because lava rock, uh, if you guys really want to treat cheat or whatever, and I don't, I don't want to say cheat like, you know, missing steps, but we talk about beneficial bacteria, right? Now, beneficial bacteria grows on everything in here in the tank. For those of you guys who don't know, it does not uh, live in the... Um, water column. It grows on surfaces, grows on the wood, grows on the plants, grows on the rocks. So I tried to create an environment that had the most surface area for beneficial bacteria to grow. That helps break down the waste, that helps um, essentially filter the water. So that's another way that I'm making this work. Another thing is, let's go back to the word community. All these fish in here now, you may see a couple of them chase after each other, but all of them, you know, don't harm each other. I don't see anyone nipping at each other, at each other's uh, fins or anything like that. There's no real territories that, that are established in here. All these fish get along. So that's another thing you want to look at when you're in your pet store, uh, local fish store, whatever. You, If you're going to do a community tank, um, you know, ask around what fish go well together. Angels, rainbows, tetras. Tetras pretty much go with everything. You know, uh, my only thing with tetras is, you know, you don't want to go too small with the tetras and you don't want to go too big with the other fish. You don't want to do tetras and Oscars. And you guys know why. You know, so you want to have fish that, um, you know, essentially... Um, Will 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 we'll coexist together. That's the word I'm looking for. You don't want fish uh, cornering each other, and you don't want fish that uh, are afraid to come out and eat. You don't want fish that are. You don't want a bully in the tank. There are no bullies in this tank. No bullies in this tank. So that's another thing you want to uh, consider when you're trying to put together a community tank. Let's talk about tank size. This is a 36 gallon buffer. And this is not. In the grand thing, scheme of things, this is not a large tank. This isn't a huge tank. So, depending on which fish you get, 
you want to do some research on how big they get when they're fully grown. How big do they get? Because a lot of fish we see at the store start out about that big. You know? So if you want to do a community tank, yes. Plants is a good idea. Um, more than adequate filtration is a good idea. Having a ton of room for and services for beneficial bacteria to grow is a good idea. Compatible fish is a good idea. But tank size is important too. Because you don't want to, you know, uh, limit a fish from, from growing and reaching its full potential. You don't want to end up in a situation where you just set up a tank, your fish are doing well, and you realize, oh wait, this fish gets absolutely huge, and now i got to run out and buy a bigger tank. You don't want to be in a situation like that. So do the research and find out, hey, how big are these fish going to get? You know, this fish starts out, and in the store, it looks, he's, he's, he is this big. But, you know, that fish grows to 18, 24 inches. That, that's, that's probably not, probably not a good idea. You need a huge tank for that. You know? So, those are just some things that, um, to keep in mind, and, and those are things I personally think of, and you guys have heard me say it time and time again, you know, you find something that works for you. I found something that works for me in my setup. Uh, oh, oh, another thing, maintenance, 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 maintenance. I will say this much. If I had five fish in here, and the plants, and the two filters, and when I say five fish, let's just say I had five Congo tetras in here. Okay, not five angels or anything like that. Let's just say I had five, five of these Congo tetras in here. And I had the plants, and I had the, the filters, and the beneficial bacteria, and all that kind of good stuff. I probably wouldn't be doing water changes once a week, would I? So that's another thing you want to keep in mind. How often am I doing maintenance? You know, yes, I got a lot of things in here helping out plants, uh, the lava rock with the beneficial bacteria, the filters. You know, but still, I'm feeding this tank a lot more because there's so many fish in here. And I don't mean a lot more like uh, twice a day or anything like that. It's just a larger volume of food that goes in the tank at once. So I will say I do a water change on this tank uh, probably 50%, which is to about there or about here, once a week. I try to do it once a week. If I forget, it's at, at, at minimum once every 10 days. You know, um, there's a there's a there's a big lesson that I've learned uh, in this hobby, and I'll kind of end on this. You know, you a lot of times, yes, you want a nice looking tank, you want it to uh, uh, you want it to be cycled, you want the fish to get along, you want it to look nice, you want plants, you want driftwood, you want rocks, you want lights, you want all this kind of stuff. But one of the things I think you have to consider with setting up a tank is how much maintenance do you want to do. Do you want to do water changes once a month? You want to do water changes once a day? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, what, you know what? You know, every, every day or every other day. And there are people out there like that. They have their tanks are so stocked that they're doing water changes 30 percent, 50 percent. You know, once every two days. That's a lot of work. I'm okay with doing all my tanks. You know, I, I usually on one of my days off, I spend uh, maybe about two hours, drain all the tanks halfway down, fill them back up, maybe check on the filters, check on the, the sponges. Uh, do some gravel vacuuming and, 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 and take care of it like that. But that's something that works for me. So when we're talking about community tanks, we're talking about stocking and all that kind of stuff, you know, um, plan around how much maintenance you want to do. And, um, you know, act accordingly, you know, when it comes to that. And I'm, that, that's, a good way, that's a good segue probably in my next video, and I'm going to end it there. Probably the next video I'll, I'll be doing, we'll be talking, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do my best uh, to show you how I do maintenance on my tanks, water changes, and um, maybe some gravel vacuum. Um, maybe some, maybe maybe we'll clean out the sponges or something like that. You know, so stay tuned for that, guys. Uh, again, definitely keep the ideas uh, coming. Um, I really enjoyed uh, doing videos like this. I think this is a good good direction for the channel to go. Let me know, know what you guys think. Leave any comments or questions down below. And as always, I'll talk to you guys down the road. Bye.